you pulled that little curtain shut. See a little curtain there. So I got up to it. I said, it ain't soundproof. You can still hear me. And I just witnessed it. <laughs> By this time, the manager came out. So anyway, we had to do with that. They, they put her out. They made her take her stuff down and leave. I tell you, we got to stick up for what we believe. Amen? We got to do it. I praise God. And we're on God's side. So I keep witnessing to people and people begging me to all the time. That's why I do it because they're always, I'm so busy and they're always begging me to witness to them. Isn't that something? I just walk by and they say, how you doing? I got to tell them. Many times I say, I uh, I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to catch an airplane, but I wouldn't be so rude as to walk away and not answer your question. So I answer it, and they don't know what to do. They're just standing there. And one couple I talked to, as they were leaving, he, she said to him, why did you ask him that? He said, I don't know, but isn't it funny? He answered it. <laughs> you, you're supposed to answer a question, you know. So anyway, I just think everybody can win people. Praise God. That's what it's about. Amen. Amen. I got some books out there. Here's my life story. I mean, if you want to get a copy of my life story, not my whole life story because things happened last night that aren't in the book. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you can get a copy of that. I wrote a book, Answers to Questions You Always Wanted to Ask. Wrote another book, 20 Success Secrets. Wrote another book, Dreams, Plans, and Goals. Uh, God, everybody ought to have a dream and a plan and a goal, shouldn't they? And I wrote a book, Rearranging Your Mental Furniture. How you think, why you think that way. We're going to talk about some things on that tonight. And then I've got a, a book called What's Your Passion? It's, a, a only, it's the only book out that we can find that is a total soul winning book. If you want to win a shy person, you turn to chapter 10. It talks about how to win church people. I get a lot of letters on that. And uh, it talks about how to win uh, your mother-in-law. I mean, you... Isn't that something? It talks about how to win anybody to Christ. So I hope you get a copy. And then I've got a, a seminar out there uh, on, on creative speaking and why some make it and some don't, and how to be successful in life, not only financially, but spiritually, emotionally, and physically. It talks about um, how to make money on a credit card and never use it, how to never make a monthly payment, how to make uh, your payments weekly, break it down weekly to cut on your mortgage and just a bunch of stuff that would be worth a while. And, of course, I'm carrying another CD up here. Pastor, you gave me this one. <laughs> I ain't selling this one. This one's mine. But I, I looked at this, and I was so impressed. 28 different places in the Holy Land that you went where you read the scriptures at the exact locations. And I'm, I'm going to be using that. Thank you. I'm going to use that in some of my messages. I led a man to Christ on the airplane, this is true, the other day. And he wanted the page out of my Bible where I read the scriptures to him. And I've never torn pages out of my Bible to give to somebody. But it, in this case, I, I had to do it. So I tore it out and gave it to him. And now my whole Bible is coming apart. And I, it's a white Bible. And... I have another one. I found Exodus this morning behind Revelation. <laughs> I know that ain't right. And uh, <laughs> Linda's making fun of me. But anyway, <laughs> it just all kinds of things happen. My wife said, don't let anybody see that. I'm not trying to show it to you. It just happened, you know. But anyway, <laughs> it's the way it is. And, uh, but I can lay it out nice and don't have to turn pages now. Just, but, but I can't preach on that one page, whatever it was, so, because it's not there anymore. So I have to use something else. That guy was a broker I led to Christ. <laughs> I asked him what he did. He said, I'm a broker. I said, you ever thought of being richer? He never thought of that. He, he wanted to give me a card, broker. You met somebody broke going around passing out cards. Unbelievable. But anyway, led him to the Lord. <laughs> oh, the Lord's good, isn't he? Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about good news or bad news. And what do we listen to as Christians? The majority of us here are Christians. And what do we listen to? It is amazing to me that bad news sells. 
That's what sells. Sorry, but that's what it is. I was in Hawaii preaching the first of the year, and I picked up the Star Bulletin. You can't maybe see that from here, but I picked up the Star Bulletin. This was January 4th. You know, how many remember this headline from West Virginia? Twelve miners dead. How many remember that? It was front page in your papers, too, here. It was all over the country. Twelve miners dead. In the newsstand right next to it was USA Today, 12 miners found alive. <laughs> one guy was standing there and said, I don't know which one to buy. Are they dead or are they alive? I said, I wouldn't buy the one, but I'm going to buy them because i got to read this story. And the, the, it says here, the men were taken by ambulances to the nearby hospital for examination and are doing fine. That's what governor said of West Virginia. Now, this whole story in here is a lie. And yet people believe that. It's amazing how many people believe the news that don't believe their pastor. Hello. That's right. We ought to believe our, the, the word of God. Isn't that true? And the gospel, people believe the news. They are geared to believe in the news. I believe it is has influenced a lot of people in a negative way because this is a negative world that we live in. We today are a positive force in a negative world. I'm going to talk about some things tonight with the future and with the things, uh, situation in the world like it is. I'm going to share things that will be worth something to you living in the Washington, D.C. area. I hope you're here tonight at 6 o'clock because we have within us God has placed within us a power that is greater than any force in the entire world that can take you from where you are now to where God needs you to be. Amen? We're going to talk about it. But you see, people are prone to listen. They believe the news. Most Christians, you know, they know Jesus died. But some of them think Elvis is alive. It's amazing. Somebody saw Elvis Presley in the mall the other day in Minnesota. He got away before they could get a picture. Isn't that amazing? And some people actually believe that. Now, this is not political this morning. This is not a political sermon or political statements. But I want to share something with you to show you how and why we believe like we do. Since the war started in Iraq, 47 countries have reestablished their embassies in Iraq, but you will never see that on Fox or on CNN or on the news media any place. You'll never read about that. 1.2 million people in Iraq are working for the government and get paid weekly. 3,100 public schools have been renovated, built, or rebuilt since the war started. They have 20 universities, 46 colleges, four research centers, and one cancer research center that has been built on with new equipment and is operating with a minimum of problems. I wonder why we never saw that in the news, why we have to do research to come up with that kind of stuff. 4.3 million children will go to school in Iraq tomorrow morning, and 96% of them have had their second series of polio vaccinations. That's good news. Amen? I think that ought to be front page. They have a million, two, uh, a million 200,000 people in Iraq that use cell phones. <laughs> they didn't do that when Saddam Hussein was in charge. They got 75 radio stations, 10 TV stations, and 180 newspapers that operate in freedom in Iraq. And we have about 30-some thousand born-again Iraqis living in Baghdad, and some of them thanks to our servicemen. Amen. That has had a part in winning them to Jesus Christ. But we never hear about that kind of stuff. Now, 70,000 people in the world every day give their lives to Jesus Christ. That's good news. I'd like to see that in the front page, wouldn't you? That's good news. And we have 170,000 
Bibles being given out somewhere in the world every day, not counting what the Gideons do. I think they did 8 million Bibles last year. We have 11 million copies of the Scriptures being given out every day somewhere in the world. Man, this is exciting things. We have senators that have prayer meetings here in Washington, D.C., and we have more born-again congressmen than ever before. We ought to be shouting victory. Amen? These are good things. But what about the news media? You know, it is amazing. I was in overseas when Mount St. Helens blew up. Do you remember Mount St. Helens? That's out in my country. And the news media said there is no sign of life in Yakima, Washington. And people said, Ken, did you hear that? I said, yeah, our people are smart. They went inside. Helicopters flying over, didn't see anybody. So where did they all die? No, they were in the buildings. You know, people are so dumb. There's their stupidity and there's ignorance. I won't preach a sermon on that someday, Pastor Goldberg. Stupidity and ignorance. See, ignorance can be cured. I'm ignorant in some ways of some things. We're all ignorant in some way. Isn't that true? We, there are things we do not know. Ignorance can be cured. You can learn. If you're ignorant of something, stupidity is fatal. There's no answer. I, I don't know. Maybe the pastor will have to correct me after service and counsel with me and help me and say, Ken, you need help, and I will listen to him. But anyway, you know, I don't think there's any cure for it. But it's amazing how people don't know what's going on. Did you know that in Bahrain and Dubai, Arab countries, that for the first time in history just recently, they are allowing Gideons to place Bibles in the hospitals. Isn't that wonderful? And Pakistan is a Muslim country, basically. One percent are Christians there. But Pakistan, loaded with the Islam religion, and they refused, the government refused to let the Da Vinci Code film be shown in Pakistan because they said it's a blasphemy against Jesus Christ and will affect our Christians. Oh, man. I said, man, there's a lot of good news things happening, but we never hear about that. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was in Israel a couple of years ago when they bombed a hotel. I saw it on CNN. How many have heard of CNN? Chicken Noodle News. And... Sorry, we may have somebody from CNN here today, but I'm telling you, it's just the way it is. They don't always tell everything, and they bombed a hotel, and I grabbed my camera, and I ran downstairs to get a picture, and there were some kids playing, and a dog walked by, and I thought, well, where's the bombing? I saw the ambulances. I saw the blood. I saw the people on stretchers and people crying and screaming. And it, it happened at our hotel in Jerusalem. And I went downstairs, and there was nothing. I went back in the hotel, and I said to the manager, what's going on? Oh, he said, we're getting calls from the United States. He said, it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. Now you say, Ken, are you in a binge against the news media? No, I want to talk to you about good and bad news. But the mind is affected by the bad news. It just didn't happen. It's amazing. The manager said, you want to see it? Go up on, turn on CNN. You can see it there. <laughs> see the bombing of our hotel. I'm staying in on the news. They showed Arab boys throwing rocks at an Israeli tank the other day. And all the cars on the left side of the picture had California license plates. Something wrong there. But see, people, uh, my grandkids are starting to figure it out. The world basically hates Israel. But we're for Israel. The Bible said pray for Jerusalem. And I don't say that because I'm a German Jew. I don't say that. I have many Palestinian friends, many Arab friends, and, and Pastor does too. We have friends on both sides. And we need to pray for both sides. Amen? But see, and I talked to a brigadier general yesterday, and he said, Ken, I said, how are you doing in Israel? He said, Ken, don't even turn on CNN. He said, don't turn on the news. And I said, well, I saw some stuff. He said, Ken, I'm telling you, a lot of it is reruns. It's not true. Look what ABC did just a month ago. ABC apologized for some of the films showing on the news media from Iraq. They said it wasn't 
actually from Iraq. It was out of a movie. Somebody was going to sue him that was in the film that was supposed to be from Iraq, that he never was in Iraq. And, you know, anyway, the apology was on page 18 down at the bottom. How many know it's never on the front page? Never on the front page. Now, if you turn your Bible this morning to Mark, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and um, verse 4, here is a piece of good news, a real good piece of good news. Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Man, people ought to have been excited and said, we can do this. We're going to catch fish. They should have been talking to each other. Get your tartar sauce. We're going fishing. We're bringing home a big catch because Jesus just gave us good news. But Simon Peter came up with the bad news in the next verse. He said, Lord, we fished all night and we caught what? We got nothing. So what he was saying was, I know you gave me good news, but I'm not going to believe it. See, Simon Peter, he had just watched CNN. So anyway, or something. But anyway, he came up with the bad news. We had tried that program. It doesn't work. We've already fished all night. We came home defeated. It, it just simply didn't work. Now, we have to make our mind up in our life, are we going to believe the good news or the bad news? Which is going to affect us? I read the good news of the gospel every day. And the Lord has set me free, and the Lord has healed me. Amen? The Lord does things for our lives, and that's the good news of the gospel. Now, just being in a great church like this will not get you a miracle unless you do something. You can sit here, you can sit, you can be hungry and sit at a table full of food, and unless you do something, you will leave the table hungry. You know that's true. It's a very simple thing, but you know it's true. And just being here, just hanging out doesn't get you a miracle. Simon Peter was hanging out with Jesus, but he didn't get a miracle. He came up with the bad news until he started changing his thinking. See, some, I'm going to talk tonight about our thinking, how we change and what we need to do for the future, what God's given me for the future with what's in the world, what's happening today, North Korea and all over. I hope you're here tonight. How many, how many have a dog? Let me see your hand. How many got a friend that's got a dog? How many have seen a dog? All right. Got everybody. How many believe dogs like bones? Put your hand down. Dogs do not like bones. <laughs> you see, I gave my dog a bone. He chewed on it. I want to tell you why he did it and why he didn't want to do it. I'm going to share that with you tonight. It will change your thinking on some things. So I'll, I hope you're here tonight. It's going to be a great illustration tonight. We're going to have fun. But when I look at this, Simon Peter hung out, but he didn't get a miracle. And just hearing didn't get it done either. You can hear all day long something. You don't do something, it isn't going to work. Isn't that true? We make mistakes. <coughs> I was driving in Texas and... I just praying and driving, and I went over the speed limit. I wasn't paying attention. And I looked, and here, here's a policeman rawr, blowing a siren, lights pull me over. He's a big guy. Boy, that guy was big. He invented big. And he came up and looked in the wind, and he said, ha, I've been waiting for you. I said, I got here quick as I could. And we got to talking. I, he, he let me go. But we got to talking. <laughs> I think he forgot 